Okay, so we are going to use the fact that the absolute value of some expression u could also be expressed as the square root of u squared. Now, that's kind of a weird idea, but think about it for a second. You're used to, if you see the square root of something squared, that those things cancel, right? You're just left with the u. But let's think about the reason why this is equal to the absolute value of u. Say u is negative 3, okay? Negative 3 squared is positive 9. The square root of positive 9 is positive 3. So that is the same thing as taking the absolute value of negative 3. We get the same result. So we are going to use that fact to prove that the derivative of the absolute value is equal to the derivative of what's inside the absolute value times what's inside the absolute value over the absolute value function obviously when what's inside the absolute value is not equal to zero because we can't divide by zero. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start by replacing the absolute value of u with the square root of u squared. Well, to take the derivative of that, I need to rewrite that in uh, exponential form. I'm using a, a rational exponent instead of the square root. That's u squared to the one half. Yes, I know that those cancel. Just roll with it for a second. So when we take the derivative, bring down the exponent, keep the inside the same, subtract one from the exponent, multiply by the derivative of what's in the inside, and we're assuming that u is, is an expression, so we need to multiply by the derivative of that expression as well, okay? So chain rule with the one-half power, chain rule with the squared and the u. Okay, and let's simplify things a little bit. So the one-half and the two cancel. We have u times u prime on top over the square root of u squared, which in the very beginning we defined the square root of u squared as the absolute value of u, so then we can substitute that in here at the end, and there is the derivative rule for the absolute value function. That equals the derivative with respect to x of the absolute value of u. Okay. u is some expression, it's not just x, but obviously this applies if it is x, um, then u prime is just 1. So the derivative of the absolute value of x is x over the absolute value of x. Um, let's think about this for a second. Well, let's do one like this and then we'll uh, plug in a specific value, okay? Let's say that our function is the absolute value of 3x squared minus 4, and we want to find the derivative of that, the absolute value of 3x squared minus 4. So f prime in this case would be, uh, you can really do this in any order that you want to do it, um, but the rule was written as the derivative of what's on the, in, on the inside, so the derivative of that is 6x times what's on the inside over the absolute value expression itself. And usually there's not really any simplifying to be done on these absolute value problems uh, because you can't cancel the 3x squared minus 4 because one is inside the absolute value, one is not. Uh, so you should kind of have to leave them there. Uh, you could distribute that out, but I'm not going to, because what if I in turn asked you, well, what is f prime of negative two? Okay, well, life's a lot easier if you don't cancel it, um, if you just plug it in. Over the absolute value of 3 times negative 2 squared minus 4. Okay, here's a hint. You don't actually need to evaluate uh, 
um, that expression right here, you just need to decide, well, is this going to end up giving me something that's positive, or is it going to give me something that is <coughs> negative? So, um, negative 2 squared is going to give me a positive number, positive 4 specifically, 3 times 4 is 12, minus 4, that's positive. So, this expression on top is going to have the same value as the absolute value. Because this one's positive, it's going to have the same value as the uh, bottom. So, at this point, technically, you can cancel them out, and your answer would be negative 12. Your answer would be negative 12, because the value of the derivative is at negative 2 for Any questions?